In the video today, we're going to be talking about similar figures, and we'll be using um, proportions just like we were in our last unit. So we have some vocab that's repeated again. So we have a proportion, which is an equation stating two ratios are equal. We have ratio, a comparison of two quantities measured in different units. A scale drawing, which is a proportional representation of a space or item that's too large or too small to be drawn or built to actual size. And then a scale factor, which is a ratio that gives a relationship between the distance on a map or drawing to the actual distance or size. So those should all sound familiar because we saw those in our last set of notes. We have a few new uh, vocabula vocabulary words today. So for congruent, this is just going to mean that we have two shapes that are the exact same shape and size. So they'll be equal. Similar shapes are going to be shapes that have corresponding angles which are congruent or equal like we just said so the angle measures will be the same and then the corresponding sides will be proportional so that's why we're going to be using proportions again to find missing side lengths in similar shapes so a similar shape could be um, a triangle that's a little bit small and then a triangle that has proportional sides but the same angle measures they're not the same exact shape obviously but one is smaller one's bigger but if their angle measures are all equal and their sides are proportional, then they would be considered similar. Our last vocab word is corresponding sides and angles. So what I mean by that is, say on this triangle here, if we have this pink side here, the corresponding side on this similar triangle would be the same side there. And same with their angles. Maybe this angle would correspond to this angle down here. So corresponding sides and angles are sides and angles in the same position among similar shapes. So they'll just be in the same spot on the two different shapes. So some other um, vocab and symbols that you'll be seeing in this unit. The first one is this kind of tilde line. This just means similar to. So you can say that one shape is similar to another by putting that in between. So if I wanted to say triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEF, I would use that squiggly line in between and that would be pronounced as similar to and we would know that that means that their corresponding angles are congruent and their corresponding sides are proportional, going back to that um, vocabulary word for similar. Our next symbol that you'll be seeing is um, this triangle and then three letters. This is just pronounced as triangle ABC for this one or whatever letters would come after it that you'll see in the future. So that could just mean if this is our triangle here, triangle ABC would have the points A, B, C as the vertices. This next one we have where we have two letters with a line over, neat, over them is either segment so you can think of it as a line segment where it stops at some point, so segment DE, or um, more related to what we're talking about in this unit, it'll be side DE. So again, if you're thinking about a shape, say we have a trapezoid, um, we could have the trapezoid DEFG, and side or segment DE would be this one right here between two vertices D and E. This next one we have where it looks kind of like um, an angle is just called angle, whatever the letters are, so H, I, J in this case. Now just make a note here that order does matter here. So because the I is in the middle, that means we'd be measuring um, angle I. So we could see a triangle where we have angle H, I, J, so maybe it's right here. H, I, J means that we're talking about this angle where I is in the middle because we go from H to I to J. So that's going to be that specific angle. If we were talking about angle J, we could have said H, J, I. Um, so just make sure you put it in the right order. The other way you might see that is just written as angle I. So you can use either one. The last symbol that we have here is an equal sign with the similar symbol on top of it, and this just means congruent to. So remember, congruent means they have the same angle measure. So we can't just say that in two triangles that they are the exact same triangle, because if there's two of them, then they're not exactly equal. So we have to use congruent to, 
but that could tell us that each of their uh, measurements would all be congruent and the same measures, but they're not the same exact triangle. So you could say the triangles are congruent to each other, or you could say that certain angles are congruent to one another. So those are all your vocab and symbol words that you're going to need to know. So you can come back to reference this if you're not sure later on in the notes or in the unit. If you go to the next page, we have a few examples um, to practice what we're learning with this. So if we want to complete the congruent statements below, it tells us here up top that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. So congruent shapes have equal measures and equal side lengths. So we can say that their angles are going to be equivalent to one another um, or congruent to one another. So something that you want to make sure you're paying attention to is the order. So since they told us that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF, that means that A and D will be corresponding to one another. It also means that B will correspond to E, and our last one is um, C and F will correspond. So that's going to be important. I would suggest color coding or marking your angles a certain way so you can remember which ones go with which. If you color code them, you can see how um, they're not drawn right next to each other the same way, so it would be hard to tell which is which, but now that we have them marked, it'll be easier to see what goes with what. So in the first one we have angle A, and it says it's congruent to what? So the other angle that has the same measure as angle A should be angle D, because those were the first two letters in our triangles. Then we have angle E, that's our pink angle, and that's also pink on angle B in the other triangle. So these other markings that I'm adding here are another way that you'll see congruent angles. So if you want to add those in for when there's not color available or just when you see a picture given to you like this, you'll know that th that means that those two angles are congruent. Um, now our next one says um, side EF. And EF is on this triangle over here. That's our pink to our blue side. So the pink to blue side on this triangle is side BC. So we can say that side BC is congruent to side EF. And I used one tick mark on both of those pink to blue sides on each triangle. That's another way that you can see um, congruent sides in a shape when you don't want to use colors or you're not sure if you just have a picture and that's what's given to you. That's what you'll know is congruent. Now in our next one we have angle F and that's the blue angle. So that angle will be our three lined angle and that's the blue angle over here is angle C. So we know that angle F and angle C are congruent. Then we have side AB and that's our pink to yellow side and I'm going to put two tick marks on that. Pink to yellow on this one is side DE. So we can say that AB is congruent to DE. And our last one is side AC which is our blue to yellow and on this one blue to yellow is D F. So we can say side AC is congruent to side DF. So you can use these markings with the lines, the tick marks, or you can use colors, whichever you like better, um, but you will see the tick marks and lines in some diagrams that are already given to you. So just some things to remember before we keep going. When you have similar shapes, the on only the angles will be the same. The sides will just be proportional. So in the example we just had above, those two shapes, were told. they told us that they were congruent. So everything would have the same measure. But remember when we're talking about similar shapes, they look similar, but they're different sizes. So in this next one, we have these two um, quadrilaterals that are similar. They tell us that it's similar. And we want to try to figure out which one of these statements are going to be true. So you're going to have your colors out again. We want to figure out, okay, we have angle A, and that looks like it's going to be corresponding to angle G. These shapes are drawn in the same direction, so it's easy to see that A and G should be in the same position. If you want to go through and mark all of the A's and G's in these options, it's going to help us make a decision on which ones are set up correctly and which ones aren't. So you might already be seeing some that look like they might work for us. Now our next corresponding angles are B and H. So we can go through all of our B's and H's.
The next set we have are C and E. And the last one we have are D and F, and I'm just going to leave those blank. So when you want to check to see if these are true, the order is going to matter here. So we have um, shape A, B, C, D is similar to G, H, E, F. We had blue, pink, green, white, blue, pink, green, white. So this one's true. That's all lined up nicely in the right order. Here we have pink, green, white, blue, pink, green, white, blue. Again, in the same order, the letters were just written in a different order, but since they worked from each one side to the next, it was okay. Now here we have white, green, pink, blue, and then pink or blue, pink, green, white. So that kind of flipped. So since they weren't written in the same order, that's not going to work for us. Here, angle A is congruent to angle G. We know in similar shapes, the angles will be congruent. So this is true. And here, we have a proportion where on the top of both fractions, we have the first shape. So this is from our first shape. And on the bottom, we have from the second shape. So it's lined up horizontally, and then vertically we can see that all these colors match, so this is going to be a true proportion. Now in the next one, our vertical colors are matching, but up here from BA, this is the first shape. On the bottom, we have the second shape. Over here, we have the second shape over the first shape. So when we try to set up to see if this is going to be true or not, the first shape isn't all just on top like it was in this first one. There's first on top and then first on the bottom and then the second was on the bottom and then it went to the top. So this is not completely lined up. This is not going to work for us. So make sure you check for colors to match the different letters but also to see if the proportions lined up correctly. Now in the next example it says determine whether the parts of triangles are similar. So if you want to see if these shapes are actually similar to one another you can set a proportion using their sides. So LN, side LN, we know is 4. So I'm going to make a proportion using this model right here. So 4 is for side LN. Then we have side SU. Now those are going to be corresponding sides because if you see they're both right on that tall um, side right on the right of each triangle. So LN and SU are corresponding sides there. And SU is a measure of 20. And then our other sides we have are MN, which is right here, and that's 3, and TU. And those are both on the bottom, so they're corresponding. MN is 3, and TU is 15. And once you make that proportion, if you were looking for a side that was X, you could solve it for X like we've done. But just to see if this is proportional, we just have to cross multiply and see if we get the same number. So 20 times 3 will get us 60, and 4 times 15 also gets us 60. So are the sides proportional? Yes, because their cross products were equal. And that means that we can say that these two shapes are similar. So yes, they are similar. Once you know that the sides are proportional, then you can say that they are similar. Now we have two more examples. Um, we have two sets of similar shapes, and we have to figure out what the missing sides are. So you need to first determine the corresponding sides, then you need to set up a proportion, cross multiply to solve for x, and then label your answer and check your work. So in the first example with the trapezoids, we have the top here is 10 and the top over here is 15. So those are going to be proportion or corresponding sides. You could also use the bottoms as corresponding sides as well. And then the sides on... Um, on the left and the right are going to be corresponding to one another as well. So you have lots of options to choose from to set up your proportion. One way we could do this would be to put the top over the side. So if I do that, I'll go with the top of my first try or the first top of the first trapezoid over the side of the first trapezoid, which was 10 over 8. And I can set that equal to the top of my next trapezoid, which is 15, over the side of the next trapezoid, which is x. This makes a proportion that's lined up because you have all the top pink measurements right on top here. 
And then on the bottom, we have all the side measurements. And this one came from the first trapezoid. This one came from the second trapezoid. So everything's lined up. We're ready to cross multiply to solve. 10 times x gets us 10x. And 8 times 15 gets us 120. When we divide each side by 10, we get x equals 12. And our units here are centimeters. So in order for these two shapes to be similar, this x value on both sides here would have to be 12. That would mean that all the sides here are proportional. Now in the second example, we have a pair of similar triangles given to us. and We want to write and solve a proportion to figure out what side DE is. So notice those little marks that I was showing you before that's telling us that angle A is congruent to angle D, angle B is congruent to angle E, and angle C is congruent to angle F. All those markings are showing us that those would have the same angle measures. We're looking for this side right here, side DE. So we need to figure out, okay, which side is going to correspond to side DE in the small triangle. So we have our small triangle right here. It looks like side AB is corresponding there because it's opposite from that angle that was marked with three lines. So those are both going to be those corresponding sides. So we can say that DE could go over the side 10. Then we can set it equal to one of our other sets of corresponding sides. So it looks like 7 will correspond with 14 because we have one measure to three measures, one measure to three measures in the angles. That means 7 and 14 match up. And we had from this triangle first with DE, so 14 needs to go on top, over 7 from the second triangle there. This is all lined up so we can cross multiply. 7 times DE will equal 10 times 14, which is 140. We'll divide each side by 7, and side DE will be equal to 20. We don't have any units here, so that's our best and final answer.